The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is JJ McLeod, and JJ is Director of Education with Santa Barbara Zoo. Welcome, JJ. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, yes. And I know that the zoo has quite an education program, yes. and you're in charge of all of it. Yes. So you've got a lot to tell us. I yeah. can hardly wait. Oh, my goodness. Well, first of all, it's a true dream job. Let me just first say that I, uh, as a former uh, teacher in the district, oh. I've been in education a long time, but um, stepping into the zoo and realizing how much um, amazing work there is and um, advocacy and, oh. and different you know, avenues to partner with different educational facilities and other museums, it's just been an absolute dream. Oh, gosh. So how long have you been with the zoo? I've been with the zoo for six years. Yeah. And a teacher before. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. I think wow. so. <laughs> great opportunity for them, too, to have you. Yeah. It's been, honestly, it's been great. I, I got to learn a lot about zoos and the work that they do. Um, and, you know, our programs revolve around children uh, primarily because um, they're our main demographic. But the wonderful thing is that every guest that walks through our zoo, so we're about 450,000 guests a year, mm -hmm. um, we are trying to educate them on the important work that AZA zoos do. And so having even just a tiny bit uh, to do with that is, is quite a responsibility and something that I, I absolutely love doing. So that's the idea of educating all the guests, regardless of their age, is behind, yes. sort of behind the scenes but what the guests see is like what's on the sign and what, so, so tell us how that is manifested. Yeah, definitely, so um, interpretation, you know, the way that we present uh, the information to our guests. So that goes for all of our staff, um, our keepers, all of our volunteers and docents. Oh. Um, the, the way that we present ourselves and the way we speak to our guests about our animal welfare, about our conservation programs, even just the information on the signs, we really want them to connect them to those animals um, and their wild ca counterparts. Um, and so that's really, really at the forefront of what we do is that we want people to come in and obviously have the best fun experience seeing these wonderful exotic and endangered species, but we want them to leave knowing how to care for them um, and how they can make an impact. And I think that's so, so important because we're doing that with so many children coming through our programs, but it's really neat when you see a family uh, of parents and of different generations really connect to our mission. Oh gosh. So educating all of the different ages and so, so that they understand, like even all the conservation that you're doing behind the scenes, yeah. they understand how you're taking care of the animals in mm -hmm. captivity. Yeah, in human care, definitely. Um, you know, it's... It's one of those things where, you know, there are so many zoos. There are over 10,000 across North America, really? but only about 236, I believe, right now are accredited by AZA, which is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, oh. which means that we have that stamp of uh, the best animal care and welfare. We are constantly um, uh, giving back to conservation uh, organizations and to try and help their wild counterparts. Um, having a, being a part of AZA is a very big, uh, special um, accrediting body that we fully believe in their mission to help yeah. connect uh, people to nature. And so uh, being a part of that is, is phenomenal. And the Santa Barbara Zoo is a gorgeous place with amazing staff that we, I mean, the animals are, are very well taken care of. That is a jewel in our community. Yes. You know, a lot of communities have zoos, but 236 only, 
are accredited with the American Zoo. Yeah. What is um, it? American Zoo? The Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Association no, it's great. Zoos yeah. And Aquarium. Yeah. Um, out of 4,000. 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. It's great. It's one of those things where That's then, amazing. you know, telling people, you know, you should look before you go to a zoo and, and see if they if they have, you know, they're meeting all the welfare standards because um, it's so important to, to care for the animals in a correct um, way yeah. that we're providing them different choice and different opportunities. And um, yeah, our animal care team is top notch. Our conservation team is top notch. I yeah. mean, our entire organization. Um, really does prioritize, you know, every department, every staff member, every animal, um, and it's pretty, it's pretty unique, so um, to be involved with that. And so, you know, people always ask what it's like working at a zoo, and it's, you know, my morning meeting could be with an Amur leopard keeper, um, and then I can go to a social, you know, media meeting, and then I can, you know, come back and start strategic planning for our education departments. Um, and some, sometimes I'll get called, you know, my, my favorite days are, you know, we need somebody to help walk the flamingos in at the end of the day. <laughs> and I just get to be an extra body, you know, watching them. And, like, those are those, like, aha moments of, wow, I have quite the job. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. And so also interacting with all those children. So yeah. so you you work with a lot of schools, mm -hmm. school children who who come to the zoo. Do you go out and do education programs at the schools or do you pretty much have yeah. them come? Both. Oh. So the great thing is we see about, oh goodness, about 22 to 25,000 school groups a year come to the oh. zoo on field trips. 22,000 groups? Uh, yeah, children. No children. Children, yeah, yeah. children. 22,000 uh, children come to the zoo okay, okay. with their school. Okay. And so they come on a field trip uh -huh. and we try and provide them, you know, curriculum before they come and after they come so oh, that we're really cool. evaluating how they're learning and it's how we really can plan for, you know, continuing to be on that cutting edge of, you know, of educating them and what they want and, and up with their standards of school as well. Um, and then we see, oh, thousands of kids come through our, our internal programs. We have safari sleepovers where you can come spend the night at the zoo. Oh, wow. You, yeah, tents on the hilltops, s'mores, you get behind the oh, scenes. Oh, fun. Look. Yeah, families can come, uh, scout groups can come. It's phenomenal. Yeah. We have an outdoor education program and um, we actually have the first outdoor licensed preschool in the state of California. First outdoor licensed preschool in California. Mm -hmm. Yes. Holy cow, tell me about that. Yeah, so that's, it's called the Early Explorer Program and we are absolutely thrilled. So um, during the pandemic, we had an emergency waiver to, to have childcare because we had already been caring for children in camps from ages three through, through 12. And so we realized that there was a shortage of uh, child care that was outside, that was appropriate, that was safe, and we realized that the community, uh, they wanted it. They wanted it to stay. We had a two-year wait list after the first oh, day of, of, or the first week of opening registration. Um, so, uh, yeah, the zoo has really backed um, trying to start that, and we have a beautiful preschool um, down on our Cabrillo lawn right next to the African lions and the fennec foxes um, with an ocean view, and we have uh, preschoolers that are getting ready for kindergarten, oh. that are connecting to nature, that are digging in the dirt, oh, that are, are just um, hopefully becoming really confident learners, lifelong learners, and so we are very proud of that program. That is so great. Yeah. So really preschool. So does that happen every day? Every day, yeah. Um, every every day of of, a, of the school year, including yeah. summer. Yeah, eight to five. Um, and it's a tuition based, just like any other eight preschool. We have a preschool director. Um, we have fully licensed and credentialed teachers there with their you know early childhood development classes, and um, it's phenomenal. It's it's kind of a dream to see these these kids uh, get ready for. For school yeah. at our facility, yeah, it's great. And your background as being a teacher really helps with that, I have no doubt. Yeah, we actually, I mean, our staff is so uh, dynamic. We have, um, I've, I'm a former teacher. Um, we have an, a, another former teacher who runs all of our formal programming. Uh, we have a biology, you know, major and former EMT at running our a lot of other programs as our education manager, um, and a lot of a lot of really dedicated staff that make up our education department and our entire zoo. So um, 
yeah, I like to say I kind of work with a dream team that we all yeah. we all work different ways, but we uh, we come together and we're we're running some pretty phenomenal programs. It sure sounds like it. And it takes a village, I'll tell you that. Yeah. It's not it's not at the zoo, it's not, you know, one person. It's it's we are all doing something that collectively comes together and it's it's really beautiful when it works. Yeah. So I'll bet what did you say 425,000 visitors? Yeah, we're in between about 450 and 500,000 uh -huh. guests a year. So a year. So I'll bet you most of those people have no idea. All they might know a little tiny education piece, but they have no idea all of the education, all the conservative conservation, all of the programs that are going on at the yeah. zoo. Well, and I hope they do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I hope after they leave, they, they yes. have a better understanding. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, and we do go off site, and we and you know we go into other schools and go give talks. Um, we're also an affiliate with uh, the North American um, Association for Environmental Education. Oh called NAAEE, and so we get to go and kind of be a, a part of this bigger environmental education oh, that's uh, group that's across, you know, the North America, and it's it's just wonderful, like, the, the amount of partnerships, and then, yeah, we partner with UCSB in their um, engineering department, um, nice. and so they come and they make prototypes of our animals for us, and then donate them so that our volunteers, docents, and our education programs can use them. I mean, we just have, we have so, we have so much going on, and it's so amazing when you see people connect the dots that we are more than a zoo. We are more than coming and looking at animals. We are, we are true um, conservationists. We are true yeah. leaders in you yes. know, the science field and caring for, for animals and education. And we're a true education resource um, for the school districts yeah, as well. That's yeah, that's clear. Yeah. And I'll bet, you know, you working with so many Oh, families and young people educating them about this, that, and the other thing. Um, I bet you've got a story you could share with oh, us. Oh, yes. Well, I want to say, you know, one of my, I guess, the biggest moment in my career thus far um, is has been at the zoo, has been working at the zoo. And the zoo in 2018 became the first zoo on the West Coast and the second in North America uh, to be an autism certified center. Really? So that what that means is through the international board, um, they they have you know given us the stamp of approval because our eighty percent of our staff um, has taken autism training. We went above and beyond, and they they take that regularly, and we went above and beyond, and um, we changed our map and we designated uh, quieter spaces so that parents can identify low sensory areas. We have a social narrative on our website that um, is a preview of what kids uh, or and adults might see to really calm them down before their trip so that mm -hmm. they know some animals might be sleeping, some might be awake. You know, giving those priming techniques are really, really big. Um, and yeah, and we've partnered with UCSB, the Autism Center, and they come and we do autism safari nights where uh, we give the parents a break and we have... Um, we have well-trained staff in our Discovery Pavilion. Uh, we turn our Discovery Pavilion into a sensory, you know, Disneyland, essentially, a, a sensory play, play space where the kids think that this night is all about them. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's about those parents outside that, um, you know, are navigating quite a journey of parenting a child with autism. Um, I know that. I have a child myself oh. um, on the spectrum, so it kind of hit home with me to try and make sure that everything that we do has a diversity and inclusion lens um, from the ground up. And so that, you know, list, watching people realize that the zoo supports them and supports the disability community and the autism community has been uh, quite the highlight for me. Gosh, I'll bet. Yeah. So I'll bet there are a lot of other zoos who want to come and learn from you. How do, how do you do that? Well, you know, the great thing about being a part of AZA is that there's a diversity committee oh. um, and we get to sit in on these conferences and you would be surprised at how many AZA zoos have been thinking about this, have credentials, have their staff go through uh, neurodiversity and autism mm -hmm. training. Um, yes, we were the first on the West Coast to get this stamp of approval, um, but it's really, really wonderful to see AZA and our other, you know, organizations across America and, and internationally really prioritize um, the need yeah. for, you know, the development of programs to have a diversity lens on it. That is great. Yeah. 
So let's talk about your website a minute. Yeah. Um, so, so somebody goes on the website, mm -hmm. they can find out all about the education programs, yes. the camps, the preschool, mm -hmm. all of these things yeah. on your website. On our website. Yeah, yeah, everything is there. You can always call us as well um, and just ask for a certain department or a certain question. But yeah, all the information's up on the website. And so uh, membership programs, does, yes. a, does a person have to be a member in order to be able to access some of those programs like the preschool or the autism? Yeah, so thing? no, you don't have to be a member. However, um, being a member at our zoo is um, something that we... We, we love our members. We have a very dedicated group of members. Some come every single day. We oh, see golly, the regulars really? and they, they, they walk the zoo with their kids in the morning. And we know, we know a lot of their, their faces that show up almost daily. Um, but a little uh, or a portion of your um, membership goes straight into conservation work. Oh. We, the Santa Barbara Zoo is a true nonprofit, as you know, that's what yes. you're highlighting today. And so every single ticket uh, membership really goes into, like we were talking about, the education programs, conservation work, animal welfare. It all gets thrown back into these wonderful, wonderful missions um, and our values. And so, but being a member, you get, like last night, we threw a wonderful members' night with a yes. live band and bounce houses and you know snow cone trucks, but also all of our events and programs. There's a member discount, and oh. you get you know you get um, a new uh, once a week. You get you know a news uh, update. You get new animals. You get invited to certain things. And so, uh, being a member at the zoo. I mean, I went to zoo camp when I was three. We've been members you know for a very long time, yeah. um, and it's just really fun to be a part of that community. And I hope, and I hope our community um, uh, thinks that that as well. You know, I hope they yes. walk away and just say, like, you know, we love our Santa Barbara Zoo because yeah. uh, we really, really do try our very hardest to, uh, you know, invite people into a space yeah. that is fun. That comes through loud and clear. I think Wednesday nights. Um, so we've been going on Wednesday nights. Oh, it's called nice. After Hours or something yeah, like that. And that's nights. really fun. Yeah. And it's the food is great and the music is great and the setting is great, of course. But the thing that is just so much fun is watching all of these little kids. Yes. I don't know. Four years old, <laughs> five years old, some are even yeah. younger than that. I, I saw somebody that was probably one year old oh, yeah. um, trying to figure out how to use her feet. <laughs> and so they run around and they dance to the music and they it's the sweetest thing you'd mm -hmm. ever want to see. Yeah. No, those late nights are so fun because the zoo, even though some of our animals are sleeping at that yes, time, true, true. Um, opening up that big hilltop for families to come as another place in our community that is beautiful, that yeah. we can meet friends at. And it just, it's that vibe of really feeling like like we are at the center of, of what Santa Barbara embodies, which is, yeah. you know, family and, um, you know, obviously the setting and, and seeing the ocean doesn't hurt, you know, yeah, it's right, Santa right, Barbara, right. but um, it's all about community and it's all about inviting people in where they know that they belong. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, so we're still at your website. Yes. So now people have all found out all about the education programs mm -hmm. and the camps and all yeah. that stuff. And while they're there, uh -huh. they could push that Donate Now button and make a financial donation, they right? They certainly can, yes. And, you know, we, um, oh gosh, our advancement department is just top notch, but our donors are so important to us. You know, we have a lot of different programs. Um, we have a foster feeder program, which Ooh. you can become a foster feeder to a certain animal, and you help feed that animal oh, for wow. that year. And you That's get a little cool. plush, and you get updates on them. Um, and it's really, really fun. Um, but yeah, we rely on on our donors um, to to ensure that we are keeping up with that welfare, yeah. you know, and all these wonderful experiences. And you know, being in Santa Barbara, we have we have one of the best communities, and they show up for yeah. us. Yeah, and they can figure out uh, they can sign up to be a member uh -huh. online. Yeah. Um, and let's see, so I think you use volunteers, they can find out about that as well. Yes, that's on our website as well. And we love our volunteers and docents. Um, we have, um, yeah, we have keeper aides that are usually shadowing keepers to help them, you know, oh. get gain hours uh, before they become a keeper. Our docents, uh, we've had a very loyal group of docents be with us for quite some time now. And you know, they're, 
um, sometimes the most guest facing um, people oh. and staff at our zoo. You know, they, they stand at exhibits and they're really trying for that interpretation and to teach everyone about our, our mission and about the cool animals that are usually standing right behind them. And so um, they are, we love them. And yes, all the information and we need them. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. we, we love having them around. And so we have teen volunteer opportunities, we oh. have family volunteer opportunities, that's um, cool. and that's all on our website as well. Yeah, and so you probably do training as well of mm -hmm. volunteers. If somebody oh, wants yes. to volunteer, but I don't know anything about no. animals, or no. you train them. Yeah, I mean, I was I was a high school teacher before I went to the zoo, and I thought the same thing. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness, do I have to? Mem where's the Where's the book where I memorize all these animals? And you would you would uh, not believe how fast it comes to you and how much you learn in a very quick time. But yes, there are certainly wonderful trainings with our animal care staff, with our conservation staff, with our education staff before you just get, you know, let yeah. loose. Yeah, so <laughs> a volunteer would get to, you know, yeah. sample all of that. Oh, yeah. JJ, thank you so much for all the great work that you're doing that's thank just you. benefiting our whole community. Thank you so much, and thanks for having us. I mean, all we want to do is, sh is share this out with the world, yes, you know? Yes, yes, well, yeah. thank you for thank being you. with us today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>